All right, so you're gonna see everything. You're gonna see all my secrets now. <laughs> I'm here to talk about uh, EEG translator, uh, which turns brainwaves into music. I think uh, in this specific forum here, a lot of people have already heard about this kind of thing. So many times when you show this to people, they don't really know what's gonna happen. But here I feel like this is the best place to go a bit deeper and think about what this technology really is right now at this point, what it isn't, and what it could be. And that's what I made my presentation about. Um, I call it musical brain hacking. <clears throat> and it will start in about a second. All right, so musical brain hacking. <laughs> my name is Matan. Uh, I came here from Israel. I'm on tour now for Europe uh, with two different projects that I'll speak about. So first of all, I want to introduce myself really quick. Uh, I have two great passions. The first one being music. I've been playing and performing music for 14 years with bands and uh, electronic music. And also I've been uh, producing events and festivals in Israel under the name of Universal Unicorn, where we create content, uh, video, and music for our events. And I also uh, am really into innovation. I like making things happen and seeing things evolve. And so I have a company called Shift that I started with two other partners back home. And we're basically doing consulting and creative for innovation, working with very different projects. And we're developing a operating system for communities based on virtual currencies. But these two, like these two things, they interact uh, in one specific place. And that is the reason we're all here, music technology. So I started messing around with uh, different technology for my own projects and uh, exhibitions and shows and ended up making glass beats for the Google Glass, uh, which basically allowed the Google Glass to become a MIDI controller through head movements. This won the Google Glass hackathon in Tel Aviv and moved me forward to the EEG musical interface that I'm about to demonstrate. And I'm about to go back home in a week and start designing the audio uh, aspect of a movement, cogn cogn uh, movement cognition and mobility research lab in a major hospital, which I'm very excited about. But right now, I'm focused on the EEG musical interface that I'm about to demonstrate here. So how does this like start? So the origin of this is a very interesting event called TOM, Tikkun Olam Eikaton, which happened in Israel uh, last June. And it basically brought 120 people from six different countries to one place in Nazareth. And they were all makers. We had 3D printers in every table. And what this event was about was creating new technologies for handicapped and disabled people. Uh, within 72, 72 hours, we created uh, 13 working prototypes. I was in one of these teams, and my team created this ENG musical interface. Um, it consisted of Professor Nathan Intrader, who's an EEG and brain researcher, and provided the technology. I did the music part. Renit Sleiper and Lenny Riedel did uh, most of the programming, uh, very talented programmers. And Sefi Udi, which you can see in this picture here is a paraplegic uh, young maker, meaning he can only move his head sitting in a wheelchair, but he's a 3D printing and, and designing and making really amazing things. So this guy was basically, the reason we made this is because he played guitar when he was younger, and we wanted to allow him the experience of playing music again, using the only thing he can really use right now, which is his mind. Um, and he did, he played in front of about 200 people, and we ended up winning the ALS Prize for Life Award uh, for this. So. What is under the hood? What does this consist of? The main technology that we use here uh, is called Acoustic View. This is what Nathan, uh, who's a professor at Tel Aviv and Brown University, is working on. And it's basically only three electrodes. If maybe you can see it here. Can you see it? It has only three. Most of these devices usually either have a lot of these or they have very few, but they're uh, very simple in what they can give you as information. This thing extracts over 120 brain activity functions, which is way too much. <laughs> uh, and it's using only free electrodes. Now, Nathan is using this for all kinds of medical and lifestyle applications. We're using this specifically for music. We're sending all the information through Bluetooth to a computer, and then we process this signal from EEG into MIDI. So when you think about this, this is actually just taking one type of number and making it into another type of number once everything is processed through MATLAB, which is the programming environment. How does this happen? So 
the current algorithm that we're using is only actually using 20 brain features out of the 120 potential brain features, and 20 are plenty right now. And it's taking each one of these inputs and converting them into a MIDI value. Uh, so it's making it between 0 and 127, and then sending it to a different MIDI channel. So we have independent MIDI channels coming through this thing. Um, I can assign them to pretty much anything and create instruments out of them. There is a constant update rate of how, uh, how many packets of information are coming through at a given time. And this is uh, determined both by the software, meaning the code, but also the hardware, because this computer, my old laptop, uh, alone runs it with a bit of latency, and also kind of, um, I can't really create the quickest uh, rhythm I'd like to. But basically, I think that uh, the best version we ha we've had up until now is almost seamless, like it's reacting immediately. And then I just channel it through Ableton Live. You can run it through anything. So this is how it's supposed to work. Let's see what actually happens with the prototype, right? So I'm gonna take this down for a second. Is everyone with me? I know I'm speaking fast, but are you with me? Cool. If all these headgears are feeling like a cyborg. So, right now, What you're hearing is the very first bar. So it's uh, the most left, the blue bar. And it's being translated into MIDI and then assigned to an instrument I created. I want to demonstrate what happens if I open another bar. This is bar number seven, it's assigned to a different sound. Now I'd like to open all MIDI inputs and let them all stream through the first instrument. All right, so that's a quick demonstration of how it works. Uh, I'd like to go a bit deeper in and talk about the actual implementations of this thing. So basically, I'm making a distinction between what I call triggers and instruments. I'll take this off for a second. All right. So triggers and instruments for me are not the same thing. Most of the AEG and brainwave technology that people use with music is usually about triggers. That means that we're using whatever signal we're getting from the EEG to trigger pre-recorded loops, to control filters, or using pattern recognition to send uh, actually some kind of predetermined audio out. An instrument, in this context, I define as translating voltage fluctuations in the brain into music in real time. So what you're actually hearing should be directly influenced and kind of created by your brain waves. Ideally, that means composing our thoughts, like we can hear what we're thinking, but obviously, we have a very far uh, journey ahead of us to go there. But we are, I am at least at this point, concentrating on the instrument part, because I think that's a very interesting kind of a futuristic type of music that could be made. So, there are some challenges. First of all, when you just take what I showed you now, and you just channel it through MIDI, you'll get complete chaos. You'll have a lot of different notes with changing rhythms, there's no harmony uh, and no musical context. So the first thing I did when I approached this was I predefined a scale. I chose the A minor pentatonic scale. And the reason I chose this scale is because I took the number 20, which I referenced from the number of brain features being sent, and I took five notes from the pentatonic scale over four octaves. So I have 20 different notes, each assigned to a different brain feature theoretically. It's impossible to make any real harmonic mistakes with pentatonic scale. This is why they're very important for musical education. This is how you teach kids many times, or beginners, to not make mistakes. You can create tension musically, but you can't really uh, become dissonant. And I find that we are all in this field actually children and beginners, which is a great thing. 
and I wanted us to first have this kind of privilege of not making real mistakes. The highest note that I chose for the scale was G and not A, because then you don't resolve the scale. You keep like questioning and not answering, which I think is fitting for this kind of mind instrument. Now, the next thing was the actual translation, physical translation of the EEG. <clears throat> so, there's a, a concept of biolo biological artifacts uh, when you're talking about EEG, which is meant to be muscle movements. What this means is, if you're being slapped or you're making a very like weird face, this will obviously come up in your EEG. But if you're thinking about either your mom or your dad, that doesn't necessarily show up. You're constantly sending information, so he doesn't really know what you're thinking about. So what we really need to do is we need to be careful of over-labeling. If you've ever seen um, consumer EEG products, then you know that they're constantly calling these like different types of feeds, attention, meditation. Now, this might be helpful uh, for some uses, but for what we're doing, this is dangerous because we don't really know what any of these bars really mean. I just showed you this. So these things are constantly moving and I'm learning them as I go. I'm intuitively figuring out how to play or try to play them. This doesn't mean that the meditation and attention kind of uh, concept is wrong because for example, <laughs> you can see this. This is musical neurofeedback, which is a great use for this kind of technology. You can really see how the music reacts to what you're doing. In this case, this is a very experienced meditator. The X axis means time and the Y axis, every line, means a different brain activity feature of the ones I showed you. So you can obviously tell when the person is meditating, is going into deep trance. You can see that the red uh, lines, which mean a higher activity in this region, are almost gone, but they're very concentrated in one place. So this obviously shows that this person specifically can control this to some extent, more than most people. To kind of uh, confront this question, I started coming up with a routine. So how to practice this new instrument, to actually try and make sense, musical sense, out of this. So the first thing you want to do is you want to focus on one brain feature bar. Because if you start by playing them all at the same time, you'll have no idea what's affecting what and you get very confused very quickly. If you just take one, like I did in the beginning, and you start working with it, you might be able to start and stop the music at will. The person who did this best is Seth Yudi, the paraplegic man I showed you at the beginning. His mind was so sharp that he could start and stop the music within 20 minutes of putting this on. For me, it's taking some time, but I'm getting there. And once I get there and I can really uh, tune in to when it starts and when it stops, I'm gonna try to raise and lower the pitch at will. So that is also a question. What is the speech? I can basically assign it to anything, but right now it's assigned to how active that brain feature is. Meaning the higher the pitch is, the more active that region is. And I can actually try and determine how active a region is using music. Again, musical feedback, but I can also try and make that into a melody. I can also try and make that into some kind of phrase. Once I get that, then first of all, way to go, and then I can move on to the next bar and continue practicing. If I get all of them, or at least a few of them, going at once, then we're in the future. And also, we can start uh, creating new types of music, because whatever that means for our minds, we'll be hearing that as audio coming out with different um, elements of music representing different types of thoughts and brain features. What is uh, happening with this project next? So first of all, what I showed you now is a prototype with uh, two instruments that I've made, but we're gonna make a lot of new instruments because the scale and the sound design and all of these are highly assignable. We can make them into anything. Then we'd like to have a visual representation of what this actually looks like, both for practice and for artistic purposes. And my vision, my dream, is mind jams. Having a few people sit together and play music from their minds. You can address this passively, like let's hang out and hear what our minds sound like. Or you can musically, as musicians, be active about this and try and actually jam with other people using your mind. So the next event that's happening is called GeekCon. It's happening in Israel when I come back between the 18th and the 20th. And it's basically a weekend of hackers and developers working together to promote these kind of projects. And I'm hoping that some of this will be accomplished there. But for any purpose, if any of you want to either try it out, uh, propose anything, or just feel free to contact me. This is my name. Uh, I'm available on LinkedIn, or you can email me, matan at howtoshift.com. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you. This is a great place to thank be. Thank you.